Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jono. For those of you who have been following me for a while, you may remember that I featured way back uh, a video regarding the Polaroid 600. And in that video, I showed you a couple of other uh, Polaroids that I own, but I haven't really shown you them since. So it's time to rectify that for at least one of them. This is the Polaroid Pro Pack. Quirky little camera, but quite fun, and I'm glad I own one. So let's waste no more time. Let's jump in and take a look. So this is the Polaroid Pro Pack camera, made from early 90s, about 92 uh, until about 2003. Um, unfortunately, the film that this camera takes uh, isn't currently being produced by Polaroid. Um, as I said to you in my uh, previous Polaroid video, uh, some of the films are being manufactured again now, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, the pack film that this takes uh, isn't one of them. And there are other films available. They possibly, although Fujifilm uh, used to make um, uh, a similar, you know, compatible film, unfortunately, I don't think they do any longer. And those that survive that are out in, uh, up for sale, unfortunately, are going for absolutely silly prices. And it means I've not, uh, I've not sort of purchased any for this camera. I've never actually used this camera, unfortunately. But nonetheless, I do like it and I do enjoy it being in my collection. Um, quite a, a bulky um, uh, beast as you can see I mean uh, my hands aren't particularly large but you can see uh, the sort of depth of the camera there uh, but it means it's quite solid well protected etc uh, if we start around the back first of all we've got a little sort of I don't know ring pull here uh, which is actually uh, designed for sort of holding the camera with it should you wish to um, although um, on top there are lugs for a, um, a neck strap to be fitted, which I do have, but I just don't have it on the camera at the moment. Um, we've also got a little timer here, and this was used for developing the film. I don't have any batteries in there currently, but you needed, depending on the film you were using, you would need to actually um, uh, time uh, before peeling the film apart uh, to see your image, you'd actually have to time it for the right amount of time uh, for it to develop. Uh, within its own chemicals. Um, this actually does come out uh, and you can replace the battery but it's a simple case of just uh, setting the timer, hitting start and when it bleeps uh, you're ready to peel your film apart. But we'll come back to uh, film uh, in a moment. Viewfinder on top uh, which is kind of fixed onto the top of the camera um, and there are parallax lines uh, within the, uh, the viewfinder. Uh, if you're not sure what I mean by parallax I'll leave a link to a video up here uh, that explains all about it. If we spin around to the front then, so obviously the camera is closed up at the moment. There's a button on top which we can press and that opens the camera up. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's uh, a bellows camera, um, which uh, you may well be familiar with if you've been watching my videos for some time. Some of my um, mo most older cameras, if you like, do have um, uh, bellows on them. And again, I'll leave a link uh, up here to, uh, uh, for a selection of them so for you to have a look. Talk about controls first of all, we've got uh, a film selector here. Um, more often than not, um, it was uh, 80 uh, or 100 ASA film that was used, so you could switch it to 80. Um, at the other end of the scale then there was 3000 or um, 3000 ER, and that related to the aperture of the lens, but I'll come back to that in a moment. On the front then we've got our lens, um, which is a plastic lens, um, although you know pretty good quality to be fair. Um, it's a 114 millimeter lens, so it's quite a distance uh, from the film plane. Um, and it's uh, f9.2 uh, a standard. Um, so quite a, uh, a narrow aperture really by, by modern camera standards, but obviously uh, the idea was to keep things as simple as possible. To focus the lens, you simply twist it, and as you can see, the distances are, are written on top. Uh, it goes from one meter or three and a half feet uh, to infinity. Uh, and obviously it was up for you to judge the distance to your subject and set this accordingly. So sometimes a little uh, trial and error, but uh, usually pretty straightforward process. Uh, on top here, we've got a little uh, socket for cable release. Um, and then the actual shutter button is here. So I can press that down uh, to take a picture. Uh, no wind on obviously because you could actually take multiple exposures on the same frame before actually taking the uh, photo out. 
Uh, so if you did just want one exposure, you had to be careful to remember that, uh, you know, to take it out as soon as you've taken the picture, really. Um, over here, then, we've got, um, this is actually a little light center here, but we can adjust its sensitivity to either going uh, a little bit darker or uh, a little bit lighter. And obviously that would, set, uh, that would alter the um, exposure settings automatically. Um, if you wanted it on normal, then you just point it towards the little triangle here. Uh, you may have noticed this uh, diffuser pop out uh, when I opened it. So if I go to close it again, whoops, go to close the camera again, it folds away. But as I open it up, it pops out. This is because on the side, there is the option to add uh, a Magic Cube uh, flash, um, which I've shown you on my Kodak Instamatic um, video. Again, I'll leave a link up here if you haven't seen it. Uh, but that's a little light diffuser for the flash to sort of disperse the light and make it a little less harsh. We have another switch here, which I haven't actually seen on other Pro Packs. And again, it seems to refer to light and dark, um, but I honestly can't tell you what, um, what effect that has because it's not even covered in the user manual that I have for this camera. So uh, we're just gonna have to kind of skip over that and pretend that I know all about it. <laughs> um, but that's kind of it. Um, let me just fold it away. To fold it away again, by the way, you just need to to press down on these bars before you can, uh, and then it just closes up like so until it clicks. So if we look at where the film goes, the way we open the back of the camera is to um, open this uh, side here. This just opens up and then the back opens like so. Normally you'd have batteries in here, so two AA batteries, one here and one here, and then this little thing pops up to actually lock them in place. I haven't got any fitted currently. Well, as I said to you before, I will leave a link in the description below to a great video by Treehouse Photo uh, that they show the camera in use, how to load the film up, uh, etc. But effectively it slots into here, uh, and then obviously we would just close the back up and the tab for the film would be left poking out so that you can then pull that out once you've taken your shot to remove, remove the shot for you. But that's kind of it. As I said to you, not particularly um, uh, useful to me at the moment because the films are nigh on possible to get hold of or if they are possible, unfortunately, they seem to be going for absolute silly prices. But I do love the camera uh, anyway. It's quite quirky and I like, uh, I like the way it looks. Uh, and I'm quite happy to have it in my collection. Another thing I do also have to go with it, just put that to one side, oops, is uh, an external flash. Um, and this is obviously, uh, instead of the Magic Cube, just much more robust flash, a little bit dusty, unfortunately, not getting any use. Um, simple controls on the back of turning it off and on. Um, and basically the way that works is you've got some contacts uh, here, uh, which are then replicated on the bottom of the camera. So this simply just fits together. And there we go. Uh, automatically syncs now with those contacts so that when you press the shutter, the flash will fire. And obviously it can be used as a bit of a a grip to hold the camera as well. There's even a little hand strap for you to put put your hand through. Always reminds me slightly of those sort of uh, 1940s uh, press photographer cameras, you know, where you see them um, in the black and white films. Um, so quite a, a distinctive look with the two together, I think. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for a huge support that you give me, um, getting closer to that magic 1000 subscribers. And I really am grateful. So thank you. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon.